Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. You guys have been asking for this for a while. It's one of the most anticipated mallet releases of the year. It is the Marimba Mallet series from Artifact Percussion. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Luke Uramura, Leo Palacios, Cesar Marquez, and Artifact Percussion. And today's featured studio artist is Jade Hales. Thank you so much for contributing to the studio show. And if you would like to become a studio artist or studio VIP, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. Artifact Percussion! Huge thank you to Aaron and Artifact Percussion for sending me all of these mallets. This is a ridiculous amount of mallets. Thank you so much for all the gifts as well. Artifact Percussion likes to send a lot of stuff with their mallets and I really liked all the toys and the stickers and the merchandise. It was really cool. And of course this review is 100% not sponsored. Artifact Percussion is not paying me to say anything nice about these mallets. They are just here. So this video is 100% my own opinion. Okay. But anyway, over the last 18 months or so, in the mallet market, we've seen a lot of these smaller companies emerging with some really high quality mallets at a very low price. I did a poll on my Instagram. If you haven't already followed my Instagram, it's the Studio Family. I asked you guys whether or not your collections were made up mostly of big brands or small brand mallets. And not surprisingly, a big percentage of you guys, I think it was about 90%, said that your collection was mostly made up of big brand mallets. That's like your Vic Firths, your Marimba Ones, your innovative percussions, big brands. And that's totally understandable because in the industry, you know, we have artists who are endorsed by these big companies, and then we have the instruments that are also made by these big companies. So naturally, we get exposed to the big companies a lot more. And that doesn't mean that you should stop buying from large brands right now, like not at all. It's actually better because now we have even more choice than before. We can choose to buy some small brand mallets, we can choose to buy some big brand mallets, or you might want to choose each one exclusively. It's totally up to you. And as you guys have seen on this show, I've reviewed a few of these smaller brand mallets and I've always been impressed time after time at how small companies with small teams can produce such high quality products. And this is one that I got really excited about. Artifact Percussion! So anyway, Artifact Percussion is a company that was founded three years ago from Collegeville, Pennsylvania in the US. And that basically means all these mallets are US made. And it's a really cool company. Like they've gone from just making like sticks and mallets to full on snare drums. Like I know a few people who own Artifact Percussion snare drums and they say they're very good. I mean, I don't know much about snare drums, but I will take their word for it. But while Artifact Percussion is one of the smaller companies, I wouldn't say they are small in terms of operations. They have a really good presence marketing wise. They have really good social media. They have a huge amount of products available. And before we even get started with the intricacies of the mallets, let's just talk about the price, which is in the title of this video. I know I've already given it away, but it's 25 US dollars a pair. 25 US dollars a pair. Artifact percussion! Now the reason why I think the $25 price tag is a really big deal is because if you spend $25 on a pair of mallets from an established company, generally speaking, it'll probably be something from their basics lineup. It'll have some stuff missing, like the shafts won't be as nice or the heads will be, you know, like really cheap and there'll be smaller yarn. Like they'll still work and it'll still be good, but it won't be like as good as a $70 mallet from the same company. But I don't think Artifact has skimmed on these mallets. I don't think they've skimmed in any way to make the $25 price tag viable. I think they are just as competitive as some more expensive mallets. So I think that's really interesting. If you're looking for a pair of cheaper mallets, this might be your go. Now, the second thing that I wanna talk about is the unboxing experience. Now, if you checked out my Artifact Percussion unboxing vlog, which is over here or in the description below, you would have noticed that Artifact Percussion sent me not only the mallets, but also a whole bunch of merch as well as some toys, including this hang glider thing that I've been throwing around the studio <laughs> whenever I need a break from editing, just go Phew! I thought maybe it's because I'm filming this on video, maybe that's why Artifact Percussion decided to send me all of this stuff. But no, apparently everyone gets toys sent with their Artifact Percussion orders, regardless of how big or how small they are. Like you get a Lego car, you might get this hang glider, you might get both. It's all part of the quirks of the unboxing experience, which I think is a great touch. It's a very personalized touch which is something that you wouldn't see from a bigger company necessarily speaking because they wouldn't send you 
toys in the mail. So yeah, normally I wouldn't talk about unboxing stuff on a mallet review, but I thought that was good to share because that is really cool. Now let's talk about the model lineup. So even though from Artifact Percussion, you can choose from a huge range of customization options, including head size, shaft length, all of that stuff. We'll just talk about the models that you can get off the rack, of which there are four main marimba mallet models. Firstly, there is this yellow mallet called Aureus, which is a soft mallet. This blue mallet, which is called Kalem and is a medium mallet. This red mallet, which is called Ignis, which is a medium hard. And this green mallet, which is called Quartus, which is hard. The hardnesses, I would say, are pretty accurate. The yellow is definitely a very adequate soft mallet. The blue is a straight medium. I would say the red is verging on hard over medium hard, just ever so slightly. And the green, I would say, is verging on a very hard. But again, this is all relative. It all really depends on your perception of hardness. So you can check that out in the sound test later on in this video. Now, in terms of shaft choices, you can have the birch shaft, you can have a rattan shaft, or you can have something called micada, which is this brown shaft that I have never heard of before until I received these mallets in the mail. And my man Ethan, who commented on my blog, said that Makata is a material that is used for knife handles. So it feels really nice in the hand. It's a very different material to birch. I would say it's like a stiffened rattan. So I'd say Makata is right in between birch and rattan in terms of flexiness. So if that's your go, then Mikada Sukada. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And of course you can get these shafts in whatever length you desire. I've got them on 16.5 inches, which was a recommendation from Aaron. I think these are slightly longer than my other mallets, but I think it's interesting to try something different. So 16.5. And of course, all of these mallets are $25 or you can get them in a set of four for $100, which is very, very cheap for four different hardnesses that you can use for graduated setups. I think this is a really great value proposition. Okay, okay, let's get down to business. Build quality. Guys, this is where I think the artifact mallets really shine. When I first held these mallets, I was really surprised by the level of quality in the shaft and in the head. Now, if you go down the mallets, you'll notice this little sticker, which kind of reminds me of my how to wrap your mallets tutorial. If you want to check that out, that's over here. But these little stickers are color coordinated with the head color. So for example, the blue mallet gets a gray tape and then the red mallet gets a yellow tape and so on and so forth. So I think that's a really cool decorative touch. Now, if you go down past the sticker, you'll notice the artifact logo, which is a really nice logo, is engraved into the shaft. Engraving at this price point is very, very rare. So shout out to the plug artifact, that is amazing. You also notice there is no model designation on the shaft, which I think is to save costs, which I think is totally fine because as you use these mallets more, you start to get used to them and you start to know which hardness is which based on the colors alone. Now, if you move down to the bottom of the shaft, you'll notice the smoothest, smoothest end I've ever had on this show. That's right, smoothest ends make friends. Honestly, this is one of the most well-rounded shaft ends I've ever had on any mallet series, let alone a $25 mallet series. That is ridiculous. Now, once you get to the head, you'll notice that it is the typical, not bullet-shaped head, but a very traditional diamond-shaped head. This immediately tells you that this is going to be more of an articulate mallet over a soft, warm mallet series, and all of the heads look pretty much the same. None of them are overly large or overly small. You'll also notice that these mallets pass the studio squeeze test. They are basically unsqueezable. In fact, they feel quite solid at the bottom, like almost rock solid at the bottom. I don't think these heads are gonna wear too badly, although I did notice that they did start to wear a little bit after I did the sound test for this video, which is totally fine. I think I was smashing them around a little bit. And again, for $25 a pair, I'm not looking for the utmost highest in build quality, but I think these will survive most situations. Now, what about ergonomics? I'm sure you're all dying to know whether these mallets are heavy, light, 50-50, what are they? Well, they are most certainly heavy. And you wouldn't expect these mallets to be heavy because they look like, you know, your standard sort of 50-50 type mallets or at best, you know, like your double helix type mallet, which is not really that heavy, but these are actually quite weighty. But one thing I really like about the weight profiles of these mallets is despite the fact that they are different hardnesses, the weights are basically the same. Like the weight profiles are very similar, so you have no problem mixing mallets around for your graduated setups. It'll feel very, very even. And I got that feeling when I was playing with them. It just felt pretty much the same. I have to say the Mikata mallet does feel slightly heavier than the Birch mallet because I think the Mikata is a bit more dense to keep that sort of rigidity, which I think is fine. You know, it feels really, really nice in the hand. You have a really smooth but slightly grippy finish on the Mikata shafts. I really like it. It's not as slippery as Rattan. So you get this really confident feeling when you use these mallets. And I think also the length of the mallet 
balance contributes to the weight a little bit. It does feel a little bit long. I don't know how to explain it, but it just feels a little bit more slow to move because of the length, which is totally fine. You can customize the length when you order these mallets, but I think it's really good for solid octaves or really wide passages. I don't think these mallets are as effective for really fast playing because the length slows it down a little bit. But again, length is fully customizable, so get the length that you like. So overall, a heavier mallet series, if you're looking for something that's a little bit heavier than your standard 50-50 mallets, this might be the one. And finally, the sound. Now, I'm not going to make any comments about the sound until after you've heard the sound test, but all the repertoire that I've chosen for today's sound test is coming from our recital, which is happening literally in like two weeks' time. It's really, really close. 19th of November, if you guys don't know already, it's going to be live streamed to this channel. And so, yeah, I've decided to play some serious repertoire for once, not just uh, pop music. <laughs>
So what do you think of the Artifact Percussion Malice? Do you think they sounded good? Do you think they sounded bad? Do you think I sounded good? Do you think I sounded bad? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. As I said earlier, these mallets are definitely more of an articulate sound than they are of a warm, airy type sound. They are definitely more to the point, but they are not overly hard. Even the hardest mallet doesn't have too much of that sort of sound quality. I don't know how to describe it, but it doesn't sound like really in your face. Overall, you're getting quite a mellow sound profile. I really like the soft mallet. I feel like it's exactly what I want my band size soft mallets to be like. Like it has that sort of very crisp attack, but a very round sound. I like that. I did notice that there was a very, very, very slight contact sound towards the harder hardnesses, especially in the high end, but that was only when I was playing very, very quietly. And I think that's because of the shape of the mallet, because it's shaped like that. Naturally, it's gonna get just a tiny bit of fuh 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 fuh. It's not annoying by any means. I personally don't think it's a deal breaker, but if you're really, really picky about your contact sounds, ooh. But overall, I think these mallets are a must cop. I'm giving them the studio seal of approval because they have a very, very high level of build quality. They are very well priced at $25 a pair. The company is great. They send you toys in the box. Like, I think that's fantastic. So I would recommend these mallets to anyone who's looking to diversify their mallet collection into more heavy mallets, or if they're looking for a pair of mallets that can do pretty much any sort of solo repertoire and they don't mind the weight. So this would be an ideal first set of graduated mallets. So yes, I really like these mallets. Thank you so much. The Artifact Percussion for sending me them for the show. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment below if you have any suggestions or any questions or anything you'd like to ask me. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And please hit that red subscribe button below if you haven't already to keep up with my uploads. We're getting closer and closer to 6,000 subscribers, which is crazy. Thank you so much for all your support. I am leaving for Hong Kong and PASIC next week. So I'm gonna try and prepare as many videos as I can to release on this show. But if you don't see them releasing on time, it's because I'm overseas. Sorry about about that. Once again, I'll be playing with my friend Therese in Hong Kong on the 4th of November 2017 at the HKICC Li Sha Ki School of Creativity for Pass Hong Kong. It's going to be lit. And if you're going to be at PASIC, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to meet you at our meetup on the Thursday, which is in room 113 of the Indiana Convention Center. I think it's going to be crazy. Like we've never done a meetup before like this. We're going to be inviting some of our friends along. You'll see who they are later on. And if I don't see you at the meetup on the Thursday, Thursday, which is at 6 p.m., then I will see you around at PASIC because I'm going to be there for the full four days. Is it four days? I'm going to be at PASIC for the whole time, so I will see you there. So yes, I'm going to be releasing one more studio episode before I leave, and then it's just going to be crazy because I'm going to be in Pass Hong Kong, PASIC, and of course our recital. So if you want to keep up with my travel adventures, you can check out my vlog channel. It's in the description below, or you can click over here. You can subscribe to that because I'll be releasing a vlog pretty much every day if I can. And of course, you can follow me on my percussion Instagram that is the studio family, I post stories on there pretty much every day.
day of just random percussion stuff. It's all percussion related. If you don't want to see percussion stuff, you want to see more just normal stuff, you can check out my second Instagram, which is Adam is Potato. But yes, enough plugging. Thank you so much for watching today's episode and I will see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.